Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 30. In this tutorial we're going to add in a little spot where we can start our first mission and we're also going to start preparing some of the UI elements on our screen. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So the first thing I want to do is create that little spot where we will have a mission start point. And generally in these style of games, whether it's uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 or maybe Bully or an earlier Grand Theft Auto style game, you'll have like a little circular point which will dictate this is a mission start. So we're going to do something very similar to that, but I'm going to add our own kind of twist to it because I don't want to replicate things too much because then you run the, the risk of... Um, the companies coming along saying, hang on, you can't do that, that's too much like ours, and slap you with a copyright strike. It does happen, unfortunately, but we'll uh, we'll make it look cool. Don't you worry about that. So first thing we're going to do is add in a cylinder. So game object, 3D object and cylinder, which is right there. And we're going to be using um, some shaders in this, some built in ones to kind of create a cool effect. So I want it roughly maybe here. I think maybe here. Yeah, we'll go with here. I'm going to increase it to 2 by 2 but I need this to be very thin because I need it to be on the ground. So I'm going to change this to 0 and then I'm going to change it to probably 0 0.03 maybe. I guess it depends how much we want it to kind of pop out. But you'll see what I mean um, later on this tutorial because when we've done this section you'll see just how this reacts. So I'm going to remove the capsule collider because we don't need it. I don't think there's any point to it because anything we add in collider wise for a trigger, we're going to add in manually anyway. So that's going to be irrelevant in this. We just need its visual representation here. So let's go to textures and I'm going to bring in two textures. I'm going to bring in uh, a mission texture and the wanted star. So both of these into Unity, Mission Texture, Wanted Star. We're going to use this Wanted Star a little later on in this tutorial. You can get both of them if you head over to my website. Go to Downloads, go to Grand Theft Auto and you can get them there. So let's add this Mission Texture to our cylinder. <clears throat> and you'll see it looks okay. It doesn't look fantastic. It looks reasonable, probably acceptable to a degree. And if you want to keep it like that, why not? That's completely fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change it very slightly. So I'm going to click on my cylinder, go down here to where the material is, and I'm going to change the shader. So I'm going to click on standard, go to mobile, and change it to particles, additive. And you can see it kind of starts glowing. And you'll notice around the edge as well, that section is kind of replicated, but it's very squished. We can use that to our advantage to make it look really cool. And you can see it looks like a kind of, I suppose, like a portal pad right now. But we created a script quite a while ago, which would be useful to add here. So if we go to our scripts and go to general, we have this rotation object. We can use that and add it to this object. So drag and drop that onto our cylinder. And we can set the speed if we want to. Uh, let's keep it at one for now. And let's press play and see how it looks. So I'm going to head back into the scene view up here. But there we go. That's how it looks on the ground. I'd say that's fairly reasonable. Obviously when the post-processing comes into effect here with a real camera, it's going to look a bit different. So let's take a look. i say that's okay. And I guess depending on how you want your game to look, you can increase the speed of that rotation. So let's try that. Let's increase the speed to 3. There we go. And it's rotating faster. It's up to you how large you want this to be. But remember when I was saying about the depth of the object itself? 
If we have no depth, you won't see that ring floating around the outside. Whereas if we do have depth to it, you'll see that ring floating. I mean, you can see it right there. If we place it at 12, you can see the ring floating around. So if we have 0 0.1 maybe, you'll still see a slight ring like so. So anything above zero, you'll see that ring gliding around the outside. And let's put that uh, rotation to three again, press play. And I want to go back to my scene view. And that's roughly how it's going to look. And I think I'm going to stick with that. That's how I'm going to dictate that's where a mission is. So you can play around with that whole idea. It's, it's entirely up to you what you want to do, but I feel that's kind of like a really good indicator that a mission starts here. So next thing we're going to move on to is some of the UI. Now we have a little bit of UI in this scene. If we go to our canvas, let's double click it. We have a fade in and we have fade out and we have some text and that text, if we turn it on, um, can't really see it, can we? Because we have it faded. So yeah, that's all we've really done UI wise. So what we're going to do now is we're going to greatly expand how the UI looks because we need to uh, place an area for a hint box. We need the stars, we need the ammo count, we need our cache, that kind of thing. So I'm going to turn off the fade in element so we can actually see our canvas fairly well. So remember we brought in that wanted star. Let's start with that one. So let's go to our textures. Let's go to the wanted star. And when we've clicked it, we need to change the texture type up here from default to sprite and click apply. And in doing so, you'll see that it turns into a star. Reason being is because the background is uh, it's non-existent. It's a PNG. So it means that we can apply this as a sprite to our scene. So game object, UI, and let's go image. And let's apply that wanted star over here. And there we go, you'll see star. And if we click game, we'll be able to see it. Obviously it's a little bit too big right now. Uh, we need to anchor it. Let's have it at the top right position. And let's shrink it down a little bit. So width and height, let's have as, let's have as 40 by 40 might be yeah i think that should be a decent size and let's position it using our rec tool zoom in a little and let's have it over here so we need to make sure that all of our stars so we're going to have five wanted levels so we need to make sure that they all fit equally along here so let's duplicate that one and drag it out to there duplicate it drag it out to there. Next one, duplicate it, drag it to there. And finally, duplicate, drag it to there. So then if we had a five star wanted level, it would look pretty much like that. Now there is one extra thing that we can do to this um, sprite down here. Uh, and I guess it, it's up to you whether you want to do it or not. But I like to click on um, generate mip maps and click on apply. Generally, that will make things look a little softer in the uh, view itself. As you can see, it does look a little bit softer. If I untick the mip maps and click apply, you'll see they go a little bit harder. So this just gives it a little bit of extra uh, visual impressiveness, I guess. Is that the right word? So there is our wanted level. So let's rename these to be wanted 01 and wanted 02 and a wanted 03, obviously four and five as well. So we'll be using these later on in development. And I, I think more than anything, it's kind of future proofing. So we did some future proofing in the last tutorial as well. That's what we're aiming for right now because we know where we want to go with a lot of this development. We're just kind of putting it in place now. So next let's create, um, Let's create a hint box. So up here in the left corner, we're going to have a section where it just displays hints. Like for example, it'll say first thing it'll probably say is uh, orange circles are mission start points, things like that. 
So to do that, let's go game object, UI and raw image. And let's anchor it at the top left and change the color to black. But I want to reduce the alpha. So I want it kind of see through, but not too much. So I'm thinking maybe 200 on the alpha. Let's place it up here. Let's try and keep it in line there with the stars and increase to probably about there. And how does that look in game if I hold that and do that? So we can just see it there. That looks like it should work out perfectly. So this is our hint box. So we'll call that hint box. So next thing, let's add in our ammo count. And the ammo count is going to be um, beneath here. Um, so let's have game object, UI, and let's go text. Uh, we'll change the color of the text to white. Right, font wise, it's not something we're gonna do in this tutorial. I might probably do it in the next tutorial, but the font that I'm going to use for this particular part is not something I can distribute. You can look for it now if you want. It's known as price down. So if you Google that, you can use that font, but we, you know what, we will deal with fonts in the next tutorial, okay? We, we will. So I was gonna look a little bit pants at the moment, um, just because we're using just the Arial font, but don't worry about it. We'll make it look better in the next tutorial. So this is gonna be our ammo. And obviously it's not gonna be linked to our gun just yet, but again, it's something that we will do um, when the time is right. Because the next few tutorials, I, I kind of just wanna go for getting the UI in, uh, a mini map as well, and starting the mission, that kind of thing I wanna do. So let's ha just have our ammo by default as, Let's have it as 15. Let's increase the font size to um, 30. And let's have it bold as well, I guess. So that is going to be our ammo count. So let's change that to ammo count. And I'm going to actually hold control and press D to duplicate that object. And I'm gonna change the color of it to kind of an off green, because this is gonna be for our cash, our cold hard cash. And let's bring it down to probably about there. Um, maybe bring it out to about there. And we'll just put, let's, how, how much we start with? Let's start with a hundred. Let's start with a hundred dollars. So at this point, this is roughly how our UI is starting to look. And realistically, there obviously is a lot more to add here. It's, it's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. As long as we're starting to get the basic UI elements in, I think we're well on our way to getting things right here. So let's rename this as cash count. Now, last thing I want to talk about in this tutorial is the placement of some of these particular UI elements. I want to put the three that we had originally at the bottom. So the ordering of what's in our canvas is important. It means that if fading is down here, it does indeed cover everything in the UI section. If we have it up here, it means that everything below it would still show. And we don't want that to happen because this is a completely black screen that should fade. So we need to make sure that everything is in order like that. So I'm gonna save that, press play and have a quick look how our UI elements look on screen. Hopefully everything should be okay. So our wanted stars are gonna stay there just for now. They're not massively important. So everything is starting to look pretty decent now in the sense of UI. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is I'm going to add in that uh, font because we need to make it look a little bit better, as I say. And we will look at creating those hints in the top left box. So we'll have the first hint to say that this is the um, location. You know, you go here and this is where you start the mission. Um, I'm thinking as well, we'll have location names appear 
in the bottom right. So like when we start, it'll say we're in such a place. And then when we go further through the city, it'll say such a place. So location naming as well. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.